Hello and welcome to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging field of data science. We bring the best minds in data, software engineering, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now here are your hosts, Frank Lavinia and Andy Leonard. Hello and welcome back to Data Driven, the podcast where we focus on the emerging fields of data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. If you like to think of data as the new oil, then you can consider us Car Talk, because we focus on where the rubber meets the road. And with me on this epic road trip down the information superhighway is my wonderful co-host, Andy Leonard. How are you doing, Andy? I'm doing well, Frank. How are you? I am. Actually, I'm doing fantastic. I've had quite a busy day. You and I talk very often, but uh, so for those of you who don't know, and this is probably going to go out uh, a week from now, so uh, basically... Um, it's 2 p.m. I've already got 12,000 steps on my Fitbit. I got up at 4 a.m., went to the gym, went to the tile store, packed, and I'm on a business trip. I'm actually in my car right now. Don't worry, it's parked, and I'm recording. Wow. Yeah, it's been one of those days. (laughs) It's been a 10x day. It has been a 10x day, man. So how about you, Andy? Oh, I didn't get up as early as I normally do, Frank. I slept in until about 5.30. And um, you you know this. I, I built a product called SSI's Catalog Compare. I'll give it a shameless plug. And I'm working hard to get version three of that released. I, I thought I was going to release it last October. Let me check my watch. It's June. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out software is hard. Um, <laughs> so, Pesky software. I know. I know. But I love it. I'm really enjoying it. Um I'm, I'm really excited. You might say super excited Ooh. Uh, about uh, where, where's your, you don't have your sound effects. Darn it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait, I do. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Technology, man. <laughs> Mobile. Super excited about, um, about this new version of some of the functionality. Also, I'm winding down, Frank. I'm going to go on vacation at the end of this week. Going to be out for about 11 days. That's, a, that's about enough. Yeah. So nice. that's what's going on with me. Um, I, I'm also really excited about our guest. Um, he, I, I'll just say we've had a lot of people on the show that I consider heroes. Um, and, you know, we've had Donald Farmer. We've had Dr. Ramanema, um, Jen Underwood. Gosh, the whole slew of the first, maybe the first dozen guests or so. They were just people I, I greatly admire. Uh, William McKnight is one of those people. Um, a few years ago, I read a book uh, by him. Um, I'm trying to get to. I don't want to misspeak. I don't want to misspeak the name. Ninety Days to Success in Consulting, which is available now on Amazon. Um, and I read that book, and, and I thought, "Wow, this is this is pretty awesome." It's one of the best books on consulting I've ever read, um, and I. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I think I reviewed it, um, but <laughs> it was. Um, I need to if I haven't. William is also a, a successful entrepreneur. He's an internationally recognized authority on information management. He's written some other books. There's one on Hadoop that uh, you can get from him as well. Uh, I read that book, and I'm pretty sure I reviewed that one as well. Really, really good on um, it's it's integrating Hadoop. Is the name of that book? It's available at Amazon, and um, just he's just one of those guys. He's he's got the business side of this down. He's got the tech side of this down, and like I said, uh, one of my heroes, uh, William Frank, and I'd like to welcome you to uh, Data Driven. Well, thank you very much. That's a great intro. Thank you so much. Well, we're we're really glad to uh, to have you on the show. Um, and I know that uh, I know you do another podcast. I want to give you an opportunity to plug your podcast. Well, I do. It's called Data Decoded, and you all are welcome to find Data Decoded on iTunes. Uh, it's sponsored by IBM, but it's not strictly IBM content. We talk a lot about uh, blockchain on master data management. We talk about current trends. Uh, We talk about uh, big data and, oh, we just dropped one uh, yesterday on the whole Facebook situation and what that means to a data professional and how we might need to lock down our environments a little bit more and uh, with GDPR and so forth. So 
those, those are the issues we talk about. Also a fan of alliteration too. I, I like that. For those of you who don't know, uh, alliteration is when you say like, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, Data Driven, you know, Paw Patrol, Data Decoded. Data yeah. Decoded. <laughs> there you go. Just like you guys, Data Driven, right? That's us. So what have you been up to lately? Well, lately I've been up to a lot of things as usual. Um, we have our, our cl- in-client activities. So we've been building some master data management environments out there, some analytical environments, some big data environments, and um, doing a lot of strategy work. We're really known for our strategy, and that's getting the workloads into the right platforms so they can succeed and tying it all together. And uh, really getting data moving towards uh, business goals and using a data maturity model to determine some of those next steps on the journey and getting those into the organizations. What do you think is, um, you think is limiting organizations from taking full advantage of their, of their data? Well, it, it should not be the technology, but sometimes it is because we stick right. to technology that we've had in the shop for 10 years. And, well, it's been good enough. Uh, but uh, you really need to get the wind at your sails and get into the right technology today. And today there are so many different platforms that make sense. And it really takes some skills and knowledge to get your data into the right platform to succeed. And I think that really helps you out a whole lot. So if you're using Hadoop, maybe, for example, in, you know, for some use cases, you're using the uh, analytical uh, data stores in the cloud for some other things. Maybe you have master data management in the shop for something else, you know. All, all in due time, you know, horses for courses, get the data into the right platform to succeed and open up your possibilities. Get away from the mindset of, well, we're this or that shop, you know, open up your possibilities. And I think that'll open up the bottom line of your business too. Oh, that's very true. And I, I, I've seen that a lot in my, in, uh, in my career is that it's not the technology that's the limiting factor. It's the opening people's minds to what's possible. It's totally uh, people's mindsets and and leadership. Uh, this is something I, I harp on quite a bit in my writing and my speaking. Um, we could use a lot more of it, a lot more leadership, a lot more willingness to step out there and, you know, get some get some real uh, returns going for the organization by taking advantage of all the modern possibilities that there are, are out there and uh, stepping out there a little bit inside your organization. So that's one thing I really try to do, no matter why I'm in a shop, is develop leadership, develop leaders, because companies need that. They need data champions, because today, business strategy is really about data strategy, because so many of the things that we're trying to achieve in our business are hampered by our inability to get data to the point of refinement where we can actually use it towards those objectives. So data's in the way. So we need to, you know, us as data experts, we really need to step up as leaders in our companies. Interesting. Well, that is a, that's a great quote. I'm going to definitely call yeah, that absolutely. out in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> actually, there were several great quotes in there, uh, uh, William. So really appreciate that. Um, what do you, you know, what's your advice for people who are just trying to get their foot in the door Uh, Maybe they're trying to get into just data in general. Well, my advice is it's a great place to be. And uh, I have enjoyed my career now, 20 years consulting, all in data, and uh, a decade prior to that, also in data. So I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Get here any way you can. Uh, And when you get here, be ready to lead. Because this is, you said it, you said it up front, the new oil. I agree with that. Um, There are other analogies, right? But it's really the place to be for organizations. And when organizations become data-driven, like what I did there, uh, when they become uh, (laughs) data-driven, then their possibilities go up exponentially and they can really achieve their goals. And it's going to be those companies that stand out. So there's different ways to break in. Uh, Obviously, on the technology side of things, it's, you know, you have to learn technology and be able to deploy technology and so on. And some people take to that very rapidly. Others might find their way in more of an analyst type of space where they're putting the data and the business together. We desperately need that kind of leadership as well in organizations. Uh, I think that's important to, to, to bring up because one of the, if you've seen the Venn diagram, 
of, you know, what's a data scientist, you know, one of those three circles is subject matter experts. And people forget that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You have to apply it. No more of this white coat back room. I'll see you in a month. You know, you got to be in, in here, in the business and integrated and bringing, bringing some value in and dripping it in on a daily basis, really, if you're a data scientist today. So um, just get integrated out there, really. Absolutely agree. Uh, I think when you mentioned the data analyst, um, I, I consider that a, a different skill set. Of course, it's one of the ones, as, as Frank uh, pointed out, one of, it probably falls into the SME category. Um, but that's often the hardest part of, uh, you know, what we consider data science when we look at the big bubble, uh, the, the pieces that, that make up the different skill sets that are required to, uh, to be a unicorn as a data scientist. Um, and I think really that it's a good thing that folks are starting to realize that these are really different jobs, that it's a lot easier to put together a team with, say, three individuals operating as a data scientist, a data engineer, and an analyst. Uh, it's easier to do that than it is to just find some one person who's great at all three of those. Well, I mean, it can go different ways. There's different ways to skin that cat. Um, but you definitely need today. I don't know any organization that's patient enough to have people that don't have data expertise uh, somewhere in the shop and somewhere in the applications that they expect to succeed. So, uh, right. you know, we're, we're flexible in our model. We work with a lot of employee teams and whatever skills they bring to the table, we might merge with them, et cetera, you know, in our client engagements. And uh, that requires us to be creative. We got to be creative out there, but we're a small team approach, a small SWAT team, if you will, you know, agile. I think that's really the way to go. Agreed. So what do you think the future of data science is, William? Well, I, I think it's bright. I mean, I think this is, again, this is where it's at. This is what's going to create the competitive advantage for companies. And uh, I think, you know, I think about artificial intelligence. I know it's one of one of you guys' great topics here at Data Driven. And, and I absolutely agree. Uh, the possibilities are very high. We're only barely tapping into those possibilities, but... You know, for now, we're, we're ripping out some of the manual processes in our organization. We're taking, we're, we're building more trust in automated processes, in artificial intelligence processes, so that uh, artificial intelligence can really streamline, for example, uh, maybe a, uh, you know, supply chain concept, getting product from uh, source to the destination without a lot of manual invent intervention and a lot of stopping points along the way. So there's there's so much possibility with artificial intelligence, but you got to bring the data to the table in order for that to be uh, useful. And there again, data. Data can be the stumbling block to that bright future with artificial intelligence. So you did mention that you've been in data for quite some time. Did you find your way into data? Like, how did you get started? Like, did you find your way into data or did data find you? Oh, hmm. I guess I might say it found me. Um, I graduated with a computer science degree. I had an interview at IBM and I went out to IBM, Santa Teresa Lab. I interviewed with four different teams that day. There was DB2, IMS, CICS, and something else I can't remember. And at the end of the day, they said, well, which one do you want? So, and I didn't know one from, from the other. So I, I made the right selection. It was DB2. It just sounded cool wow. to me. So um, and so that was my beginning of, of my data career, and I've just stayed with it ever since, uh, stayed with all the permutations that data has gone through over the years and continues to go through. As a matter of fact, you mentioned you know all the time I've been in, in data, and it's true, but I'd say the last few years, it's been some of the most exciting time because of all the change that's happening. That's true. Data did go from kind of being this back office, no one cares type thing, or some people care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Andy. Um, and, and William, uh, <laughs> to kind of, it's, it's now at the heart of everything. It really is. And people are starting to learn that and companies uh, are starting to turn that corner with data. I know that my work in a company is going to be much more efficient and happen much more rapidly if that company gets it around data. I mean, the executives get it and we'll, will pave the way for the data initiatives to be successful and so on. But if it's not there, 
uh, that's okay for now, but I know I'm going to have to work on that because that's not going to be okay for a long time. De- companies need to turn their attention to the importance of data as its own discipline within the organization. It's not a drag along to applications. Right. So what's your favorite part of your current gig? Well, it's multifaceted and, and I really love what I do. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But I, I'd say, you know, one of my favorite things is seeing client light bulbs go off in terms of the possibilities, <laughs> you know, with data. And um, you, you, you sort of, uh, or I sort of engage with clients at, at a level, but I hope to go deeper and deeper as time goes on with that client and that we get into more refined uses of data, more sophisticated users, more modern uses, and uses that really drive the bottom line. So when I see their light bulbs go off and, and, and when they're allowing me to take them to that next step, I really appreciate that. So I'd say that's my favorite part. So complete the sentence. When I'm not working, I enjoy blank. Well, let's see. Um, Andy, I know you follow me on social, so you know I enjoy my fitness activities. And, I do. Um, I, I, so every day I'm hitting that, and um, I've been doing, for the past few years, I've been doing a bunch of uh, these obstacle course races. You've heard about them probably, Spartan, Savage, Terrain Race, and so on. So I've been doing those. I've been able to get to the podium more times than not, so it's kind of addicting. And I'm doing something different every day to try to, uh, you know, improve my abilities out there. So it's just, it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of variety to it. So that's really, you know, one of the main, main things I enjoy outside of work. Do you capture the data about your training and stuff? (laughs) Well, I am kind of a data junkie. I do log my, uh, my, uh, my data and my nutrients and all that. Uh, but, uh, I guess I should probably pay a little more attention to it because I'd like to see more gains. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me tired just following your Instagram. I, I turn it on and see the, you know, see a picture of you coming over some, you know, some obstacle. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I think I've lost a couple pounds just watching that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it inspires anybody, that's great. Cause you know, people are out there inspiring me. Well, that's awesome. So another complete this sentence. I think the coolest thing in tech today is blank. Um, you know, there's so many cool things, like I mentioned. And so I'm, I'm, I'm picking one, but I'm going to pick artificial intelligence. You know, again, I, it's, the possibilities are so tremendous to automate things and to get us into things that in our organizations that we can't even think about today because those possibilities don't exist. But I tell you, you know, with artificial intelligence, it's so great. So many possibilities. I, I want to see organizations turn the corner on this <clears throat> and start to accept it more in the organization. Uh, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some organizational change management uh, to get there. We've are, we're already experiencing that in our practice, trying to do some of these things inside of organizations. So building trust in the capabilities and so on. And, you know, you really don't want to overstate the possibilities either. So uh, it's, uh, I think it's something that's going to stick around. I think the winning organizations are going to adopt it now, just like I think they need to adopt everything that's going to be a keeper, you know, inside of organizations. And this truly is. So I'm going with artificial intelligence. I like that. So here's another complete the sentence. I look forward to the day when I can use technology to blank. Oh, you guys love these complete the sentences, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it's not like the SATs, you know, where, well, I think the SATs now uh, yeah. have write, more written stuff. But when I was a kid, it, it was all, mostly multiple choice. So, Yeah, I'm waiting for my multiple choice on this. <laughs> um, well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I look forward to the day when I or we, I guess, as people can use technology to um, reduce suffering uh, in the world. Uh, by all living beings. And there's many ways that <clears throat> we see some, some sprouts around this. Uh, obviously, a huge work in progress and so far to go, and nobody knows where it's all going. But I think about you know, the ability to grow meat and, um, and, and how that can possibly reduce some of the suffering that we inflict on, on animals uh, so frequently. And I also think about the third leading cause of death is prescription errors, either on the part of 
prescribing or using. And I, I just see that can be eliminated. You know, I, I hope technology mm -hmm. can help things like this and find ways to, to where there's conflict, find win-win ways, maybe with artificial intelligence that, that we can't even think about because it's so highly new, nuanced. Anything that can keep us out of war and that sort of thing. And, and as we know, the distribution of food and, and water is not, uh, not equal and uh, not good. And so I look forward to when technology can reduce our suffering and tackle some of these big issues and not just sell things. And I'm right there with you, uh, William. So awesome. Kudos. We ask our guests to share something different about themselves. Uh, we have this caveat. It's a family podcast and we've got that clean rating on <laughs> iTunes. We want to hang on to I doubt that's going to be an issue with you. And you already did share something about the, uh, you, know, you know, the athletic stuff. You could go into some more detail on that or share something different. Well, I'm glad you reminded me that it's a family podcast there, Andy, <laughs> because, I mean, I was just about to go into a profanity-laced tirade that would have been totally inappropriate <laughs> for a day to do. <laughs> I know you way better than that. But, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I'm also really glad to hear that families are gathering around the iPhones and listening to data driven. And I, I, they absolutely <laughs> are. Yeah. We've got demographics on that. I yeah. need to find out how you do that so that I can, I can achieve that with my podcast data decoded. Cause I, I'm not sure that I got the family thing going on there, but <laughs> <laughs> enough of that. Um, so uh, something different about myself. Yeah. I could, uh, I'm into the, the fitness thing, but um, I'm going to come back to business and maybe a little shameless plug here about, McKnight Consulting Group. We we do I do think we operate a little bit differently in that we focus on business justification and we take a real program approach. We blend with our clients. We engineer client workforces and processes to carry forward, and we're completely vendor neutral. So I think we're a different type of consultancy, and I'm just proud to be leading that type of consultancy, which I believe drives some of the highest value that you can get out there in a consultancy into you know, the organizations that we're privileged to serve. And when, when you become my client, um, I, I care immensely about your shop and I will uh, go to the wall for you and make sure that you are using data in the right way and for the right reasons. So um, I, I think that's different, you know, in my walk uh, in this, uh, you know, 20 years of consulting, um, we come in behind some different models. And um, I, I like to think that we're going to be the last consultancy that's going to do that thing because we're going to do it right. So that's a little different about maybe about McKnight Consulting Group than about me, but I hope it answers your question. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, it also is a good segue to my question, which is no longer a uh, fill in the blank. Um, where can people find out more about you and, and, and what you're up to? So we're on the web at mcknightcg.com. That's CG for Consulting Group. Um, I'm out there tweeting occasionally at William McKnight, and I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, try to just stay out there and put some good stuff out. So we're doing a lot on the analyst side recently. We're doing benchmarks, which you know everybody in data should want to know about some of these results that we're seeing we're doing white papers, we're doing speaking engagements, and um, hopefully dripping value out there for everybody in this space. I just love sharing. I love learning. I love the learning part of it and the, the cultivating of the information to something that is digestible uh, out there. And I'm putting that information out. So find us uh, in many ways. We have Audible as a sponsor. And I don't know if you listen to audio books, both Frank and I do. Um, we travel. And when we do, we'll pop in an audio book and, and listen. Do you have a, a good book you can recommend, an audio book or other? Oh, man, I, I'm a reader. So uh, there's, there's quite a few. Um, I, I can tell you I'm reading a couple now that are really good. I'm reading The Elephant in the Brain. Uh, so it talks about our motivations. And uh, I think that that that, you know, it's, an, it's instructive to me, even as a consultant, to understand where we're coming from, you know, and where our, how our past has, has uh, not really gone away. You know, we've been, we've dragged forward some of our past, uh, you know, needful things into the modern day. And that's still there, right. you know, that's, so that's important. 
Um, and I, I love uh, history. So if you love history, I'm reading a good book on the Roman Empire, which is called The Storm Before the Storm. So I don't know how they have all this information on what happened on a daily basis back in the Roman Empire, but there you go. So those are a couple things I'm reading. That's right pretty now. cool. So um, you, you actually read them on Dead Trees or, your, or a Kindle or... Uh, I'm a Kindle Kindle person, but every once in a while, I, I like that hard copy Got book it. too. Now I can appreciate that. Um, but if you did want to get into audio, audiobooks, um, uh, they are a sponsor, and they've hooked up our for our listeners with one free audiobook of their choice. Andy, what's that URL again? It is thedatadrivenbook.com. Excellent. Someone very smart registered that domain name, Andy. <laughs> I think I think he had help with someone helping him find that domain. But yes. <laughs> well, thank you, William. This has been awesome. I understand that Andy is is going to be a guest on your show at some point in the not too distant future. That's right. He's going to come on uh, Data Decoded and tell us all about uh, the history of technology, where it's been, where it's going, and I really look forward to that. Very cool. Any parting words of wisdom, William? I would say. Be bold and, uh, and, and think of yourself as a leader and be a leader. And this is what our organizations really desperately need right now in this area of data that we're talking about. Uh, we need leaders. Uh, we need people that are knowledgeable across the whole spectrum of possibilities out there. And don't take that lightly. There's a lot going on, but it's fun to learn about what's going on and think about the possibilities and bring that into your organization and that's the that's the beginning of leadership, I'd say, and and that's really what we need. Awesome. Anything, Andy, to add? I completely agree. Uh, every time I listen to you speak, William, I learn stuff. Every time I read your books, I definitely learn stuff. So um, <laughs> I'm still I'm still a fan. Can't wait to see what you come out with next. And it's a huge honor for me to uh, to be on Data Decoded. I look forward to that recording. Awesome. Me too. Thank you so much, guys. Let's let the nice British lady take us home. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. Don't just listen. Become a data driver by going to datadriven.tv to sign up to join the community, access to special events, tips and tricks, and more. Sign up today at datadriven.tv.